in there for me, guys. Apologize for being a little bit late. Just wrapping up 120, 130 play scrimmage uh, involving offense, defense, special teams. Played everybody in the squad just about. I can't think of anyone that didn't get in. Overall impression, I think it's uh, your common first scrimmage. You get excited about some things. You get frustrated with others. Um, we need more consistency to our standard. I think we had some brilliant plays, some of physicality, of toughness, of execution and communication. We had some other ones that uh, have a little more to be desired. Um, all the quarterbacks, both quarterbacks played you know, pretty well, uh, but we're going to demand a lot more of them. Uh, the defense is ahead of the offense. Certainly, if you had to judge it by who actually won the scrimmage, I would say the defense did, but I would say the offense is certainly coming along and made a lot of plays uh, as well. So all in all, I think um, it's, it's, it's great to talk to a group of young men that understand what our standard is and that they know, okay, this is scrimmage one, which we treat like game one. We have a game in three weeks, and we got to continue to get better and better. Uh, came out of this with no injuries, it looks like, at least nothing major. So with that being said, open to questions. All right, we'll start it off with uh, James Krapia from the Oregonian. Mara, with the top two quarterbacks, uh, did either of them do anything uh, – uh, particularly of no lead touchdown drives or, or have any turnovers or anything? And did anyone other than Sean Dollars, was uh, anybody else limited in any way? No, Sean Dollars was limited. He'll be a full go on Monday. Um, the both quarterbacks, they had their moments, both good and bad. Um, tough to say that there was any separation without looking at the tape. Got to make sure with the rotation of wide receivers and tight ends in there, um, if there was any issues in terms of you know, the actual play itself and lining up and route running and everything. But uh, I, they both had their moments. They both uh, are guys that we feel that we can win with. Tyler took just about every rep with the ones, and Anthony took uh, the reps with the twos. And, um, yep, that about sums it up for the quarterbacks. Next question, A.J. Jacobson from Rivals. Hey, Coach, I realize you haven't had the benefit of watching film yet of this, but, you know, just based off what you just saw, who kind of stood out to you or surprised you? Well, I thought our linebacking core, the older guys and the young guys, really stand out. Uh, they are they're physical. Um, they communicate well. They get lined up. They play fast. They, they're gifted. They play fast. Jamal Hill really stood out to me today. Jamal Hill is a guy that, you know, when, in recruiting Jamal Hill, we felt that we found ourselves a, a gem, a tremendous player, explosive, uh, comes from an awesome family, loves the game. And he showed out today. He had a big, he had a really, really important uh, interception. So he definitely pops. I thought, uh, I thought CJ and Travis, they ran well. They ran hard. I thought Trey Benson uh, really showed up today as well. I love seeing DJ Johnson out there. DJ is is healthy. He is, he's a big man, and he can run and he can catch, and he's really going to help us out. Patrick Herbert did a nice job. Isaac Slade continues to impress. Kayvon Thibodeau uh, continues to be a problem, you know, when he's out there. And it's not just third down on first and second down. He does really well. Probably the, one of the best plays of the day goes to Jordan Scott on a short yardage play. Jordan just did a great job just splitting uh, a double team in the A-gaps and coming up with a tackle for loss on, on a critical short yardage play. So um, without watch, that's without watching film. I could, go, I could go on with a few more, but um, – those are some that come. I know Johnny, Johnny Johnson also uh, continues. Just, just he works so hard. He just gets better, makes plays. Next question comes from Ashley Young, NBC Sports Northwest. Coach Cristobal, you mentioned that you know there's no winner, real winner and loser here, but you mentioned the defense kind of stepped up big today over the offense. How much of a difference do you see in having Jamonor Lenore back in the secondary for you this year? No, he's he was really good over the last three years. And this guy's come back as a purpose-driven human being now. He is uh, – and you can always tell, right, the eyes, they never lie. And when you look in his eyes from a, when he's at practice or when he's attending meetings, this guy's – he's on a mission. He's on a mission to be great. He's on a mission to be the best in the country. And by the way he has started off in our camp, um, um, I believe I believe in him. We all believe in him. He's – Great football player and, and getting better and hungry to get better. Next question, Julian Minenson from KZI. Hey, Coach Cristobal. Hope you're doing well on this Saturday. Uh, just wanted to get your impression of the, the new offensive line guys. Impressed with those guys. Really am. Um, 
I thought, you know, we threw a, a couple different guys in our left tackle. We all know about Steven, but through George Moore. George Moore has had a really, really good camp so far. TJ Bass jumped out there as well. Um, I thought that Alex Forsyth is – he's been like the glue. Him and Ryan Walk have done a really good job getting those guys inside uh, solidified and just playing at a high level. But, you know, you look at guys like uh, Sala, you know, and um, – you know, the young guys, Dennis and Harper, Patasi's been here a little bit. Jared Millo's been here for a little bit. They're all, they're gelling. You know, they played a lot of the same positions for the past four or five days. Today we moved around a little bit on one of the sides, and, and they performed they perform pretty well. I'm, I'm looking forward to looking at the tape uh, from an alignment standpoint, split standpoint, you know, playing with power, pad level, technique. Um, but just judging from what I saw out there, there, there's definitely some progress that lends us to believe that's going to be a good offensive line, a really good offensive line. Next question, Ryan Thorburn, the register guard. Mario Kavon was saying the other day that, you know, before his freshman year, his goal was to get 10 sacks. Before this year, his goal is to grade out to, prefer, to perfection. Um, how big of a help is that to have your best player or one of your best players wanting to be coached really hard and to uh, be an every down guy. Well, when, when, when a guy wants to keep learning and getting better, it, it makes the locker room different. And it's something that we hit upon our players all the time, especially KT. It's, um, you know, obviously, you know, he's very talented, very gifted, extremely smart guy. I mean, future is, you know, sky's the limit for him. And he has to continue to assume that role that no matter what, he's going to be the hardest worker, that he's going to bring the best energy, that he's never going to be phased, right? That there is no penalty, that there is no a big play by the offense. No, there's nothing that we can't overcome. And um, he's, got to bring, he's got to bring that juice. He's done a really good job so far. And we're going to keep pressing and leaning on him to keep doing that. Next question, Jerry Thompson, Ducks Illustrated. Jerry, you need to unmute yourself. There we go. Okay, I Coach. Uh, how about the kicking game? Did you get any chance to specifically field goals uh, today? Yeah, we missed one today. We missed one that we should have made, and we had been really good in practice. We had hit, I think, 14 of 16 leading up to today. Um, and the one that we tried today, we didn't hit. I think we tried another one that we split the uprights on. Um, we didn't kick any extra points. Kickoffs were good. Punts were, were, were okay. You know, we like to average, you know, in the 44, 45-yard range and hang them up there a little bit. We were close to it, not exactly up to the standard. Uh, but the coverage teams that go with them did really well. So, yeah, we, um, we've been doing good in the kicking game today. It wasn't what we expected, but we'll get back on track on Monday. Next up, Eric Scopel from 247 Sports. Hey, Mario. I guess what are, you mentioned this is kind of a typical first scrimmage. You, you have another one scheduled next Saturday. What are typically some of the differences you see from scrimmage one to two? Kind of what are you hoping to see there? And then on Monday, what kind of things are you hoping to see just in terms of the reaction after coming back from a big scrimmage on Saturday? Yeah, the biggest difference in scrimmage one is that it's the first time the players are out there and they're by themselves, right? When you're playing ball and you're running all these, these unit drills, a team run, inside run, seven on seven, half line pass, Coaches are, you know, proximal to the players. They can bark out corrections and commands, and all of a sudden the players go out there and it's silence, you know. And yesterday we try to get them used to that by having them out there and all the coaches off the field. And um, that's different. Now they got to be on autocorrect, right? I know that's a different year where there, there aren't many people in the stands. You're probably going to be able to communicate more verbally. But I think that's the biggest difference. So all of a sudden it was like, man, we are – we got to do this on our own. And a lot of guys did well. I mean, a lot of guys just, they picked off where they, they picked up where they left off last year. And, uh, and other guys, they had their moments, you know, they two minute drill, right? There's a way to run two minute drill. When that ball is put down or that ball is chucked down the field, you better be flying, right? You better be getting there quickly and getting set. So I just think playing the game, uh, playing the game itself again and again, and again, calling it right. Our coordinators calling the game and getting in football mode using the sidelines, you know, like we do right now this year, you're 15 of the 15 and being able to walk that entire length. I just think all game day processes, um, which we, every single day we do them, every single day, we just got to keep just grinding on them. It comes down to that, right? And, and there's not a ton of time. There's not a ton. But overall, I feel good as to where we are 
um, because of the hunger of the team, the drive and determination displayed by the team. Next up, Matt Preem, 247 Sports. Yeah, Mario, uh, Mike yesterday told us that he's playing more on the outside now instead of in the, in the slot. I'm just kind of curious your thoughts on your receiving core and just what you've seen from this group and in particular today. Well, Mike is playing all over the place. So he plays his normal slot position that he's played. He's played outside. He's played inside. Um, he's an excellent football player. And he's another guy that in terms of playing the game, the way it's supposed to be played, he embodies that completely. He's always going to be a, a guy that outworks a competition. It's going to be physical, whether he has the ball in his hands or not. So uh, overall, I mean, I, I can't help but mention Chris Hudson. Chris Hudson has made uh, a ton of plays out there. And he's made plays inside and outside. So in this offense, whether – I know typically for us here, we've had smaller slots, right? Well, in this offense, you've got to have interchangeable parts because of the way that we use our personnel, you know. And sometimes we may be misplacing personnel to create matchups. So um, – but he's – I thought, I thought of course, Jalen Red is – has always been a, a great player for us, but I, I think that both Chris Hudson and um, and Josh Josh Ogado deserve some mention as well. He had a couple of big catches out there today. Next question, uh, back to James Krapia from the Oregonian. Mario, well, typically first scrimmages can be run heavy uh, for everywhere across the country. It goes with that. Was that the case? And with that in mind, CJ was also talking the other day about uh, just how he's approaching this year, wants to get to a thousand yards again, even with a shortened season. Uh, fair to say he's certainly the most accomplished returning player you have on offense. What do you expect to see from him uh, in a shortened season? You know, statistically, I, I can't say I, I look for anything in particular. Um, I like seeing the CJ that we know, the one that we have seen play for the last few years, just, you know, complete package at running back and a guy that, you know, he, Coach Mirabal had a great message for the team today. You know, if, if you're here, you, it's because you have opted to be in and being in is being all in. Um, and CJ is another guy that embodies that. So his leadership's going to be counted upon. The way he runs, the way he catches the ball out of the backfield, and the way he protects, I mean, we feel he's one of the best in the country. Um, and it's infectious. The other backs really, they, they feel his game. They feed off of it. Those guys are some of the best juice guys, energizing guys on the sidelines. So um, CJ is invaluable, James. He's, he's, he's about as, as good as I've been around, as not only as a player, but as a teammate. You know, it's so important. Like you mentioned, it's a shortened year. This thing is – I don't know what the percentage breakdown is. Of course, we're playing football, but there's a lot more to this, right? We're all dealing with a pandemic. You've got to have protocol. You've got to carry the protocol out of the building and take it home with you, create your own bubbles. I've heard all the cliches. You've got to be able to just be disciplined, man, you know? And uh, I think he brings that to the table and he impacts others in the way that he carries himself. Next question, AJ Jacobson from Rivals. Coach, you know, obviously this has been one of the strangest of off seasons ever. Um, given that, where would you say this team is uh, you know, after week one, after the first scrimmage versus the first two seasons, uh, your first two fall camps here? Oh, you know what? I, I don't see much of a difference. I see some things that we're probably a little bit ahead on and some things that were maybe not up to par yet. And we've been, look, we've been practicing and we were able to ramp up probably quicker than what we thought. We thought that we would have to keep, um, and we have, we've kept our routines where we had to modify them some because we didn't have that long stretch of training leading up to camp, but the way that these guys, their outputs, their numbers, their workloads and accelerations and high-speed running on the GPS system, it, uh, it lends us to trust and believe that they're in better shape than what we thought they would be. And so they've been able to maintain a high level of performance in practice. That helps, okay? I thought tackling might be an issue today, and I saw some good tackling. I saw some that we have to clean up. There's no question about it. I, I, I saw some really good tackling. I saw that we need to learn how to practice, uh, to relearn how to practice thud, which is staying up and going full speed because sometimes we're ending up on the ground and, and we can't do that. We don't have, right? We don't have enough bodies. That's where you get, end up getting hurt when guys are on the ground and get them, getting rolled up. So, um, again, I think we're, it's very comparable. I don't see much of a difference in this point in, the, in our camp 
this year as opposed to the other couple of years? Next question, Julian Minenson from KZI. Um, you talked about giving yourself and, and the guys on the team um, more time to watch college football over these last last few weeks. I'm just curious, how much does that help specifically for these scrimmages, seeing other teams across the country in in-game situations, and now you guys are starting your, I guess, in-game situations with these scrimmages? Well, I think anytime you can learn a lesson without feeling the consequences, it certainly helps. And... It also, from a, an excitement, right, enthusiasm, a juice standpoint, you know, it's, it's real now. We're about to be on that stage, right? We're now three weeks away, 21 days, whatever it may be. So it, uh, I just, it's what we do, right? It's what we do. It's our passion. And, I mean, we watch football anytime, anywhere, any place. The fact that, you know, we've been able to have, a, for the most part, around the country, success in, uh, in playing out this season. It gets our guys excited. They get to see situations. If we find a situation that we think is learning um, a teaching moment, we'll cut it up, we'll bring it in, we'll discuss it and break it down as a team. And sometimes we might rep it in practice that way. We might choreograph that particular situation and try to build that muscle memory. So if that does come up, you know, we uh, can respond appropriately and, and end up on the right side of the win column. We got time for two more. Uh, next up is Ryan Thorburn from the Register Guard. Mario is curious. With no fans in attendance this year, do you bother piping in artificial noise for scrimmages, or do you just kind of go in silence? No, it's a great question. We're waiting on the ruling for the ambient noise. What can be used or not? Once that's in effect, we'll be able to to crank that out or crank that up um, as the conference uh, sees fit. But it's been uh, really important for us to to practice in a just empty stadium and I you know honestly you want to recruit players coaches staff that are okay with that if that was the norm quite honestly guys that would love football so much you'd play it outside or in a parking lot anywhere you know now that being said there's we all know there there is no place like Austin Stadium and so since our people our family our can't be there we have to bring it right we have to when we pack our bags on friday to go to the the hotel or to travel we've got to pack our juice we got to pack our enthusiasm we got to pack our own Otson and unleash it come game day and you have to practice that you have to practice sustaining juice and energy throughout practice and you have to create practice periods that require you to respond right in a place that's empty, that doesn't have a crowd, where you have got to create your own momentum. So all in all, it's, um, we've been preparing for it, and I think we're going to benefit a lot from that. Final question goes to Matt Prem, 247 Sports. Yeah, Mario, haven't heard much discussion um, from a couple guys. One, Jonah on the offensive line. I know there was a lot of optimism when he, when he signed with you. Kind of, what's the status with him? And then receiver spot with Waters and Wilhoy. I know you were very high on them prior to their injuries in camp last year. Just kind of where are they from a development standpoint? Sure. Well, in Jonah's case, he got a little dinged up. So we've been holding him out. Uh, we don't think it's anything serious. We expect him to be back. So in the meantime, others have gotten reps there. In terms of the other spot, I think some other wide receivers have stepped up. You know, you can't deny the way that Johnny and Red and Mike Pittman have been playing and and Chris Hudson, we're trying to get some other guys to get going. We really need to get um, JR and Will Hoyt and Devin Williams going. There's a lot of potential there, um, certainly a lot of ability. And they are getting reps. But at, at this point right now, we feel that that's where it's at. Got to keep bet getting better. Got to keep repping and create uh, playmaking opportunities. And when they do come their way, they got to make them happen. Thank you, Coach. Appreciate your time. Okay, guys, thank you. Have a blessed day. Stay safe. Thank you, Coach.